first of all, on immigration, the Biden administration did not do a good job for at least a couple of years in between. The numbers have come back down now. But uh, putting her as, uh, in charge of any portion of the border was Joe Biden. I, dude. You should, you should never, listen, I agree with Cenk there, okay? I agree with Cenk there. Biden probably did repeal too many executive orders in a border. Biden probably did, didn't think that the asylum crisis would get as big as it was, okay? He, like, there were, there were issues that took a while to, uh, to address, obviously, okay? You should never, you should never admit any of that in a conversation with, with panelists full of, uh, of Trump supporters who will unironically think that immigrants are eating cats and dogs. I mean, she is a massive flip but she deserves a chameleon title. Every interview is full of words, salad, nonsense. Yeah, with Trump, you kind of know what he, what he is. Are you fucking kidding me? I, that criticism is so dumb. Word salad, word salad. Every single fucking thing Trump says is a word salad. And he's genuinely insightful and funny. He has a good sense of the one-liner and he delivers it. Insightful? I mean... Making up dirty nicknames for literally all your opponents is one, uh, you know, I, I guess, I guess insightful is a way to describe I'll that, maybe. Production. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to help with the algorithm, and consider sending a donation through YouTube Super Thanks to directly support the channel, and I'll make sure to reply. Kamala Chameleon, Clay Travis versus Chink Uyghur on, or Chink Uyghur, I don't I remember what I'm saying, on Vice President Harris flip-flopping. Oh boy, okay, the flip-flopping allegation, let's see. <laughs> weekend, border czar Kamala Harris was last seen at the U.S.-Mexico border in 20... Strong opening, border czar. She's previously explained her failure to visit by pointing out she hasn't been to Europe either. She also derided Donald Trump's border wall as a medieval... Okay, to be fair, that was a dumb answer. That was really dumb when she said, I haven't been to Europe either. That was stupid. And that was the old Kamala. Kamala the chameleon is suddenly getting tough on illegal immigration, and she wants everybody to know about it. But is anybody buying it? Can a 20-minute photo op do anything to persuade the millions of Americans who blame the Biden administration for southern border chaos? Unsurprisingly, Donald Trump's not convinced, in a typically understated fashion, he responded to the border visit by declaring Harris to be mentally impaired and demanding she be prosecuted. We're joining me to discuss all this and look forward to the vice presidential debate on Tuesday is the founder and host of the Young Turks, Jake Yuga, the commentator Claudia Conway, the founder of Outkick, Clay Travis, and the director of new documentary Vindicating Trump, the conservative commentator Dinesh D'Souza. Welcome to all of you. Um, well, let me start with you, Clay Travis. The border czar, Kamala Harris, suddenly seems to be remembering what her job was. I think it's a sign, Piers, of uh, how much she's in trouble, that she went to Arizona, that she has reversed every policy she's basically stood for her entire political career. Remember, this was a woman who, when she was running in 2019, Piers, didn't just say she basically wanted a wide open border. She said that any migrants that were being held in prison should get taxpayer funded, funded gender reassignment surgery, that is, surgery. Be in the yep. United States, to make sure that illegal immigrants are able to change their gender. I mean, this was absolute balderdash. This is madness. And uh, I think this issue by itself, in conjunction with over 400,000 criminals, 13,000 convicted murderers, 16,000 rapists all entering this country. I'm country and starting to wreak havoc all over the citizens of the United States. I think it standing alone is- uh, I don't- uh, he didn't specify during Biden's term. I'm pretty sure those numbers are literally from multiple decades. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people- kept, I'm pretty sure Trump himself actually repeated the claim that like these were from, um, these were from migrants that entered during Biden's term, but it was actually from migrants who have entered like the past 20 years, including under Trump. Foster Arizona and Nevada. I think she's going to lose Georgia, North Carolina. And it all comes down to whether Trump can win one of the three states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, or Michigan. I think he can. I think this issue is the single worst right, right alongside of the economy for Kamala and why she doesn't deserve a promotion. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing I would say if I was looking at this uh, with no horse in the race, which I don't, despite your frequent attempts to claim that I do, uh, would be that by going there now, it looks like political expediency. But it also reminds everybody just how bad the southern border crisis has been under the Biden administration. It's indisputable. The numbers don't lie. And um, surely it was a tactical error. The numbers are back down. down the late 2019 really levels, by the way. But... Yeah, no, you're not biasing against her at all. You just called her Kamala Chameleon, but okay. Uh, so well, she is. The border she doesn't mean to sound partisan. Okay, no, she no, just no, is. No, she's no, a chameleon. Nice, no. Okay, sure. Uh, you, uh, you, you don't agree? I, I, Hang on, you don't agree with that? No, I don't. You don't yeah, think so, Kamala, uh, you don't think Kamala Harris deserves the title Kamala Chameleon for repeatedly U-turning on previous positions? Seriously, Jane? Seriously? So hold on. No, no, you hold on. Answer me. Piers, okay, I'm not going to give you a random see. nickname for Kamala Harris. What the, you don't think she's being Hold on. Can I, can I ask a question? Oh, I my God. To, that you're biased against her, and then you proved me right by saying, she's a chameleon. Why don't you admit she's a chameleon? We, meanwhile, we have a mentally disabled person running against her. But we'll get to that. So in terms of border, all of this is silliness. I don't do the usual partisan stuff. So first of all, on immigration, the Biden administration did not do a good job for at least a couple of years in between. The numbers have come back down now. But uh, putting her as, uh, in charge of any portion of the border was Joe Biden's... I, dude... You should, you should never, listen, I agree with Cenk there, okay? I agree with Cenk there. Biden probably did repeal too many executive orders in a border. Biden probably did, didn't think that the asylum crisis would get as big as it was, okay? He, like, there were, there were issues that took a while to, uh, to address, obviously, okay? You should never, you should never admit any of that in a conversation with, with panelists full of, uh, of Trump supporters who will unironically think that immigrants are eating cats and dogs. You should, you should never concede to any of that. Oh my God, you, you, unless your opponent, I've said this, unless your opponent completely disavows like 90% of Trump's rhetoric on immigrants, 90% of the things that J.D. Vance and Trump has said about uh, Haitian immigrants eating cats and dogs, you should never concede any of that. Fuck you, dude. No, you can't, you can't be expecting me to like have a reasonable conversation after your candidate repeatedly, repeatedly lies about immigrants for literal years and then j recently just repeats like blatantly false claims about immigrants eating cats and dogs and then like expect me to come to the table be like, well, maybe we have a little bit of a point about 
immigrant about you know biden repealed too many executive or no fuck you no no we're not doing that man throwing her under the bus they had nothing to do she had nothing to do because he wouldn't let her and and so i don't think that the democrats have covered themselves in glory on the issue of immigration i think going down there for a photo op and just looking at uh, you know the border is just so meaningless every stupid politician does it it gains them nothing I, the media shouldn't feed into that but finally i think that people have to admit that, you know kamala harris came to donald trump's position i'm not thrilled about that but that's a fact right and then donald trump said oh yeah i don't have my own position because he wanted to help himself in the election rather than protect <laughs> you guys he cares more about himself than the voters every single time and there is no excuse you guys have for donald trump killing his own immigration bill other than his greed and his selfishness at the border talking tough. So they're counting on this fictional portrait, this movie portrait of Kamala Harris to trump, if I can use that term, the uh, the observations and experience of the American people. They're counting on the American people being complete and total suckers. Okay, uh, Claudia, welcome to Uncensored to you too, two debutants today. Um, the American people apparently need to be complete suckers to buy into what Kamala Harris is now doing on the border. I think there's some truth I've never to seen that. This I think that immigration before. is her worst um, topic, in my opinion. I think that the Biden Harris administration, what they've done with immigration, has been abysmal. Um, and I think that we can't really call her a chameleon. If we're going to call her a chameleon, we have to call Trump a chameleon and JD Vance chameleon and everybody else a chameleon. Bro. Bro. Doing, no, no, I would. Yeah, Cheng, 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 yeah. wasn't, Cheng um, wasn't smart enough or calm enough to, to ask me. You had that, so let me just, for the record, I think they're all, they're all pretty comedian like Trump has you turned on many things, right? So is JD Vance, not least calling Trump Hitler. So yeah, I think they all the comedian trick. It just Absolutely. so happens. And the boy George is actually a friend of mine. Well, 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 no, because Kamala Chameleon obviously sounds very similar to Kamala Chameleon, which was the big boy George hit with Culture Club. That's why she's called Kamala Chameleon. Yeah. If Trump was called Kamala Trump, he'd be called Kamala Chameleon because it would go better with the song. That's the only reason she's yeah, got the name. But they're all quite comedian yeah, like, no in my opinion. Well, it's true. Yeah, conveniently, you found no uh, derogatory nicknames for Donald Trump or J.D. Vance. You just have to find one for uh, for Kamala Harris. I, Look, I just said to it's you. It's okay, Piers. It's okay. He's your friend. You guys did a show together. You're gonna have access. To it. We get it. You want Trump to win? Let's move on. <laughs> I've said none of those things. Other than I'm happy to say Trump's been for twenty years. Didn't the last also... time you interviewed Trump, wasn't, wasn't, it, it, wasn't it kind of a disaster that he was furious? Thank with you, Clay. You, right? He actually issued four statements from the office of the presidency. Uh, or he was obviously just out of there. Uh, there. He issued four official statements lambasting me as so dead I was catching flies. So our friendship has had rocky periods. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, Trump has been a friend of mine a long time. I have friends. Chang, you may you may not understand the concept of this. I have friends who sometimes I disagree with them. You know, you're one of them. I don't understand that anyway. Let me come back to Claudia. Let me come back to Claudia. Finish your point. Um, yeah, no, I think that her going to the border at this time is a little performative, and I focus on the Gen Z vote. And immigration is not as important to Gen Z voters as it is to um, all registered voters. It ranks about 61% of voters rank it as very important. But with Gen Z voters, I mean, they're not really looking at this, but I'm looking at this and I'm saying, why? You know, her campaign's been pretty smart, but, you know, back to what everybody else was saying, I think this was just, like, you know, a little ploy for the campaign, for the campaign, just going to Douglas, Arizona and saying, hey, I'm at the border. You know, many, um, Republican Congress Congress people were upset about this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, 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 just don't I, I, I don't think it was a good move. No, I, I just think it looks, as you say, performative. Um, Clay, Trump's been giving a number of speeches in the last few days, which uh... <laughs> I mean, I, at least it can semi remove the talking point of ah she hasn't even invented a border she hasn't even invented a border she i mean she openly openly the border and she hasn't even been there at least that talking point is a little bit refuted now i guess but contained you know the usual greatest hits but also some slightly insane moments let's take a look at some of the stuff that happened this weekend joe biden became mentally impaired kamala was born that way <laughs> she was born that way uh, uh, this is and if you think about it only a mentally disabled person could have allowed this to happen to our country anybody would know this I mean, look, I, I see Trump for what he is. You know, he talks in this way that it makes people laugh. He's entertaining. He's brutal. He's bombastic. He loves insulting people. Is it a smart move for Trump to be calling Kamala Harris mentally disabled from birth a month before an election where she may end up being president of the United States? I think it's an effective attack. I think the word choice, as you well know, with Donald Trump is sometimes the bull in the china shop aspect of his entire personality. He is an entertainer. That's at a rally. Um, and I think it has to be taken in that context. But what I think he's getting at, which cuts through and does connect, I think, with a lot of voters is Joe Biden, clearly, despite all the people on the left trying to claim that he was the best version of himself and behind closed doors, he was sharp as attack, which was what everybody said up until June 27th, as you well remember. Um, what Kamala is not actually able to cite some sort of mental and physical cognitive decline to explain away why she's been wrong on everything. And I think this is important, too. Do you remember in 20, uh, I guess it was 20, uh, 2004, in many ways, George W. Bush won that election because he said John Kerry was for the war in Iraq until he was against it. And they got him on flip-flopping. Your comic chameleon uh, line for Kamala Harris. I mean, just think about this. She now wants to build a border wall. She doesn't want to ban straws. She wants to allow fracking. She now doesn't believe in reparations. Basically, everything Kamala Harris has ever said in her entire political career, up until 2020, she doesn't believe in anymore. And I think that's base, what's going on here. Base, right? base, big tent party, base, moderation to appeal to a larger base. She's been wrong on every issue. I mean, I would ask anybody who's supporting her, name one thing that Kamala Harris has done really well, such that she deserves a promotion. Fears on your show. I bet you've had production assistants that got everything wrong. They probably yep. didn't end up the overall producer of the show. That's I mean, I think, I mean, she was definitely, as vice president, probably one of the most influential ones just because, just because she had to uh, be so many tie-breaking votes in the in in the in, uh, in the Senate. What Kamala Harris is arguing for. Yeah, I mean, check. Here's the thing, check. I, you're, I know you're five days before the election, instead of California, pass a law prohibiting the requirement of voter identification documents. And yeah, it's dumb. Whatever. Welcome to the stream. Uh, uh, how, do I, how do I fucking pronounce that? <laughs> Prometheus Tyson. So the feeling you're holding your nose with Kamala Harris. Uh, you don't want her to be the Democrat nominee, but she is. Therefore, you kind of well, she'll have to win because I hate Trump so much. She's not a convincing candidate. I mean, she is a massive flip flop, but she deserves the chameleon title. Every interview is full of word salad nonsense. You know, with Trump, you kind of know what he, what he is. Are you so fucking kidding me? I that criticism is so dumb. Word salad, word salad. Every single fucking thing Trump says is a word salad. All the time, all the time. Look at his
is outpacing the cost of percent to have in common crisis. If you win in November, can you commit to prioritizing legislation to make child care affordable? And if what specific piece of legislation will you advance? Well, let's see. Let's see his answer. Senior, you know, I was uh, somebody, we had uh, Senator Marco Rubio, and my daughter Ivanka was so uh, impactful on that issue. It's a very important issue. But I think when you talk about the kind of numbers that I'm talking about, that because Look, child care is child care. It's, you couldn't, you know, there's something you have to mm. have it. In this country, you have to have it. Uh, but when you talk about those numbers, so true, to the kind of numbers that I'm talking about by taxing foreign nations. Yeah, the numbers he's talking about. That oh, by taxing foreign nations. Yep, that's what terrorists do. They tax foreign nations. Just do it very quickly. And it's not going to stop them from doing business with us, but they'll have a very substantial tax when they send product into our country. Mm. Uh, those numbers are so much bigger than any numbers that we're talking about, including child care, that it's going to take care. We're going to have, I, I look forward to having no deficits within a fairly short period of time. No deficits. Coupled with uh, the reductions that I told you about on waste and fraud and all of the other things that are going on in our country, because I have to stay with childcare. Yep. I want to stay with childcare, but those numbers are small relative to the kind of economic numbers that I'm talking about. The kind of economic growth, numbers. But growth also headed up. Mm, including growth. By what the plan is that I just. Uh, growth by from by the plan, his plan being tariffs, by the way, which apparently fix everything. I told you about. We're going to be getting in trillions of dollars, and as much as child care uh, is talked about as being expensive, it's relatively speaking not very expensive compared to the kind of numbers we'll be taking in. We're going to make this into an incredible country that can afford to take care of its people, and then we'll worry about the rest of the world. Let's help other people, but we're going to take care of our... It, it, why? What is happening with my wife? I don't know, guys. It, sorry, America dude. First, it's about... Make America great again. We have to do it. Well, America first. Got to get that one in there. Thanks, Trump, buddy. Kamala Harris does not. She wouldn't inspire me to open a crisp package. I have to be clearly, honest. clearly not a word salad type of guy, Donald Trump. You know. No, am I wrong? <laughs> yeah. So, guys, you're looking at it wrong. Of course, I think. So, but let me explain because it's a little bit more. Damn, he's I retarded. Think Kamala Harris yeah. is a typical politician, and that's not a compliment. I think she's an establishment Democrat, uh, and I think 90% of politicians are establishment. What's the nonsense he's saying? He doesn't have a good answer, so he just says tariffs make America great. Tariffs make America great. That's all he has. That's all he has in his arsenal. That's all he knows. So if you're uh, someone who's on the left or progressive, and you think she's going to deliver unicorns and rainbows, no, she's going to deliver four domes. So then, if you're at home, you're saying, oh my god, that means I vote for Trump, right? No, no. The reason I'm voting for Kamala Harris is because Donald Trump is literally mentally impaired. He's a he's a, a danger to this country, to our democracy, and that is not just a talking point. He said to terminate all the rules, regulations, and articles of the Constitution when he didn't win. Yeah, but he's not going to do and that. And you know he's not going to do that. Yeah. You know what what mean, that's not what he meant. This is the problem, though. So, guys, when you go after so, Trump, so this is, he, he, he thinks a clean coal is you take out coal and you scrub it clean. He thinks F-35 stealth fighter is invisible to the naked eye like Wonder Woman. He took a dementia test and thought it was an IQ test. The other day, he, he said that the audience in the debate went crazy for him. There was no audience in the debate. The man has significant mental problems. I'm not going to vote for a borderline lunatic. So that's why this conversation is nonsense. A typical politician versus a guy who tried to terminate the Constitution and is a verifiable lunatic. Not a hard question at all. Right, let me bring in Dinesh. You spent some time Trump recently um, for this new project of yours. What's your, what's your assessment of Trump now? Compared to say eight years ago when he first came on the political scene, took everyone by surprise, not least the Democrats, pulled off the most shocking presidential win in American history. What's your impression of Trump now? Well, there are certain aspects of Trump that are exactly the same. I mean, you have to look at this guy as a kind of stand-up comedian. When he was making the lines about Kamala, you could tell he was getting the reaction that he was going for. And he's genuinely insightful and funny. He has a good sense of the one-liner and he delivers it. Insightful? I mean, making up dirty nicknames for literally all your opponents is one, you know... I guess I guess insightful is a way to describe Almost that, maybe. Perfection. Now, the point is, people said a lot of the same things even about Reagan. You know, the guy's crazy, he's demented. So Trump is not outside the mainstream in his political rhetoric. When Cenk says that he's a would-be dictator, he will terminate the Constitution and so on, all of this would be Trump's somewhat scarier if Trump hadn't already been in office. I mean, the guy was there yeah, already. Years. How, many, how many leading Democrats, Cenk, did Trump prosecute and lock up? Let's compare that to the number <laughs> of Republicans that have been indicted. Did Trump indict the leader oh of the God. opposition party and try to put her in jail? People shouted, lock her up. Yeah, <laughs> just like Biden himself is indicting Trump. Lock her up. Yep. But did he actually try to lock Hillary up? No. No, no, before you we come back to change, respond to that. Yeah, maybe, maybe Trump just committed more crimes. Ever consider that? Maybe Trump just actually committed crimes. I'll play a clip from uh, Dinesh's uh, film here, Vindicating Trump. This is relating to Trump being comparable to Caesar. Take a look. You're not a normal Republican. You are massive entrepreneurial success and a builder. You built the New York skyline. You're also a cultural icon. They fear that even though they know you're not Caesar, you do have that kind of dimension. You have that kind of power. You didn't do an insurrection, but guess what? Had you called for one, there would have been one. Mm -hmm. And there would be one if you called for one now. They know that kind of power. They're scared of it. And so they're like, this is the one guy we need to go after by all means necessary. Well, I don't know about yep. that power. I'm not sure I want that power. I want the power just to make the country better. I mean, that would be my point, which is if Trump was going to do all the things you claim he's going to do, he'd have done them. He yeah, tried. He it's, you guys pervert reality in a way that is amazing. You <laughs> pretend that he's you, said, you stop saying you guys. Well, can I? Dinesh just said that. You just did it, Piers. How do I not include you when you just did it? I literally can said, I the you said that Trump wants to undo every part of the Constitution. I'm telling you, that is completely insane for you to say that. Utterly nonsense. You're he's insane. Going, he's You're going going to do it. He's I don't like he did Jan 6. Like, he said that he wants to, like, deport people, like, for, uh, protesting in support of Hamas. He said he wants to, I think he said he wants to imprison people for burning the flag. You like, know, he's made, like, many anti constitutional statements hey guys, before. Let me, like, let me just address the audience, okay? These guys are trying to brainwash you into forgetting the things that Donald Trump actually did. He actually did January 6th. They actually did rush the Capitol. They did get inside the Capitol. People did die. He did say, let's terminate the Constitution when he didn't win. He did have a three hour meeting about installing martial law and rolling out the tanks. Everyone in his administration said they would resign immediately if he did that, which General Michael Flynn suggested. Bro. He actually, when his chief of staff said, you're 
fans are looking to murder your vice president. He said he deserves it. So you guys are pretending he didn't do these monstrous things, which he already did. Actually, Cenk, years, if you ask me why, I'll never vote for Trump. Yeah. Because he hates America. And he already proved it when he lost. He said, my government, I'm going to smash it to pieces if I can't have it. Because he's a spoiled little baby. You're pretending like it didn't happen when it already happened. Had you had you read or heard anything I wrote or said about January the 6th, you know exactly how I feel about it. Yeah, why did you just pretend that it didn't happen? No, didn't. You're like, well, he didn't do it. He did do it. Well, the arguable point, which is, needs to be argued in the court of law, is whether he inspired an insurrection. Right? He vehemently denies that. You say he did. And it's an arguable point. There was clearly a riot at the Capitol. Don't, don't see that giant shape. There was, don't a, shape. There was, a, shape. Up, there was a shameful riot at the Capitol that was violent and should never have happened. And I said that repeatedly. I, on that, I totally agree with you. Clay Travis. But now you're back to the insurrectionists and supporting well, them. I'm going to come to the again and again and again. <laughs> Clay, part of the problem with talking to people like Trump, you know, I love having him. A uh, lot of passion, a lot, lot of verb and so on. But once he gets talking about Trump, he literally goes mad every single time. He sounds like he sounds like a very lunatic. He's talking about America. Trump already tried to be a Even without like the incitement thing, like he still tried to pressure Mike Pence into not certifying the election and he still tried to get uh, Jeffrey Rosen to send out a, a letter to state uh, to state officials to try to make them not certify the election within the, within their own states like even if he even if the January 6th riot itself didn't happen even if you don't want to call it an insurrection or whatever like he still clearly he still tried to pressure Mike Pence to, over, to overturn the election and he still tried to he still tried to get Jeffrey Rosen to um to try to overturn the election as well. girlfriend who's been cast aside. Look, let me say two things that are that are important here. From what? Pre-COVID. I don't like Let's go to early February 20. I appreciate that, actually, because there are a lot of awful, dumb politicians. We can agree on that. In fact, there's way too many all over the world, especially America. Uh, but let me start with this. February 2020. Before, in my opinion, COVID leaked from a Chinese lab, which, by the way, you weren't even allowed to say because the Biden <laughs> oh, okay, administration tried awesome, to censor dude. everybody on social media. And now oh, suddenly yep, everybody's uh, aware that that's the most likely outcome. On that one point, the, the biggest study yeah. was released quite recently, which did seem to suggest that the most likely cause actually was from the wet market. Just for the, for the record. That was the biggest I, I completely disagree with. I completely disagree with that theory, but let's put that aside for a minute. February of 2020, the United States had 1.4-ish percent inflation. Uh, we had 2.5% mortgages. Oh, my God. White, Asian, and Hispanic real wages were up it is the case that the american i mean black unemployment reached record lows under biden uh real wages for the bottom like 10 percent of workers or like rose pretty fast we saw a lot of wage compression during the COVID pandemic because of the tight labor market the labor market is doing uh is, is back to like where it was at like um uh 2018 right now inflation is down inflation is it we just got rate cuts like not that long ago Inflation is back down to like 2% to even less than 2% if you use the harmonized index, which doesn't include owners, owners occupied, owners occupied, um, shelter prices, which, uh, which lag and keep inflation artificially high. Like the economy had never been stronger since we whipped Pierce's boys back in the good old revolutionary war and became an independent. Uh, like real GDP is higher than it was. Um, the real GDP is higher than pre COVID projections. Real GDP right now is higher after COVID than we projected it would be before COVID happened. Like that, that is, that is a, an incredible recovery in and of itself. Uh, but like for the, like we can look at all these fucking graphs. You can see percent change in earnings and inflation since December, 2019 for the most part, wages slightly outpaced inflation, uh, aside from like a bit in 2022, uh, the percentage income spent on food hasn't risen significantly. It's been uh, pretty flat since like 2010. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, the time prices of groceries has basically, I mean, it spiked in 2022 and then decreased all the way until, uh, and it started decreasing in 2023. It's now lower. It, it never got above the 2015 to 2019 average, which was, you know, most of Trump's term was <laughs> during this. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, yeah, obviously we saw a spike. Like our COVID recovery was like super, super good. You can see real household consumption, like household consumption in the U.S. has been like has been growing pretty consistently. Versus like in other countries, like it didn't did not grow nearly as much. Real GDP is way faster, is re way higher than any other day. G7. Our recovery, like we saw the smallest dip and like fastest recovery. GDP growth is higher under Biden than it was under Trump, both with COVID and not and including COVID. Real GDP is outpaced pre-COVID projections. There's an updated graph of this that shows we outpaced, uh, outpaced it even, even more because of um, because GDP numbers were actually revised upwards. <laughs> People complain about uh, a lot about job numbers being revised downwards, which just happens, obviously. Like if you follow these, if you like just follow the jobs numbers monthly, like you realize that job numbers often get revised down. GDP has been repeatedly been revised up. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, like jobs, like even accounting for the um, the, whatever the bounce back jobs. Like Biden has been better for like monthly payrolls and monthly job numbers. Unemployment has been unemployment was under four percent for twenty seven months straight. 
Uh, it's still only at 4.2%, and it's pretty impressive that we were able to decrease inflation back down to about 2% without increasing unemployment much. Unemployment is still, like, again, at like 4.2%. Uh, we just finally got rate cuts, which in the case of the Fed was not worried about inflation coming back, which is a good thing. Um, yeah. Dependent country. Never had more people been Jacobs. living in a better, in a better, in a better manner than in February of 2020. Second part. Okay, so a lot of people are looking at this and saying this is an economic selection. Trump had the greatest American economy of all time. Everybody was doing better. I think that's why so many people are yearning for that era in many ways. Second part of this. I agree with both of you. January 6th, when people riot, whether they're Republicans, Democrats, or Independents, there should be consequences and they should be prosecuted. Here's the problem. For six months, BLM effectively took. Trump has said repeatedly he wants to pardon J6 hostages over much of American cities and virtually nothing happened to them. Kamala Harris, the tweet is still up. Like literally 97% of BLM like uh, protests were peaceful. Uh, only a limited number of them turned into riots and they were riots. They weren't done with the intent of overturning an election. Like <laughs> a lot of people just took advantage of the protest to like loot shit. And there were some more organized ones where people wanted to like burn down police stations or whatever. But like. Most of these were not, none of these were like an attempt to like uh, obstruct like official government proceedings. Like the J6 riots goal was to obstruct the um, certification of the vote. Do you guys think Obama is black? <laughs> Raised money for the people who were burning down Minneapolis to bail them out. She argued we needed to defund the police. Many people out there who are reasonable, that are not MAGA diehards, that are not Donald Trump absolute adherents, look at the way that our government responded to January 6th when Trump said, I want you to peacefully and patriotically go to the Capitol, which always gets left out. They... <laughs> yep, he said that 20 minutes into his hour-long speech. <laughs> look at the way the January 6th rioters have what, a single time. been treated. And then... and then once the rioters broke into the Capitol and people like Ivanka Trump were begging him to call the National Guard or begging him to um, tell them to leave, he did nothing. He sat in his office and, and him, along with like Giuliani, called senators to try to get them, senators and representatives, and I think state officials as well, to try to get them on board with his plan to overturn the election. They say, wait a minute, what about all the people who took over Seattle, Portland, Minneapolis, Chicago, New York City, Atlanta, all over the United States, cities burned, and almost no one took any consequences for it at all. What we have to get back to, in my opinion, in the United States, and what I believe the Biden administration has done really poorly, is they have weaponized the Department of Justice against anyone with a different political persuasion. Pierce, you mentioned it. When Trump could have gone after Hillary Clinton, he said, I won the election, I'm not going to do it. When Biden got into office, he used Merrick Garland as his attack dog, and they tried to not only bankrupt Trump, they tried to put him in jail for the rest of his life. Like, and, yep. and comparing him to Hitler, they allowed everybody free reign to believe that oh, they, yep, yep. Hero, they killed him. And oh, by the way, they don't even believe that because every time somebody shoots at Donald Trump or tries to kill him, Kamala gets on the phone and Biden gets on the phone and they say, hey, are you okay? We deplore this. If you really thought Trump was Hitler, you should just say it in public. You know what? I'm sad that he missed, which 30% of Democrats. Uh, is Kamala Harris ever, or Biden ever said Trump was Hitler? I don't think, that, I don't think they have ever... I don't think they have ever said anything to that effect. That's actually are, even though they won't say it publicly. They don't just dislike this guy. They want him murdered in cold blood, assassinated, because they are crazier than anything Trump's ever said. Clea, you're not Nobody's ever said that. Clay made that up. Let he me totally come, made it up. Let me, come, let me come to Clea. Clea. Sorry, no, no. 30% according to a poll of Democrats, 30% of Democrats said they wished that Donald Trump had been assassinated. 41% of Republicans said it's time for political violence. Uh, Republicans openly have been talking about Second Amendment remedies for people that they disagree with. They've been egging on violence. Donald Trump true. laughed about how Nancy Pelosi's husband was smashed in with yep. a hammer. So the right loves violence. And the minute that it, 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 it touches Donald Trump, you guys are like, oh my God, you're going to Donald Trump twice in the last two months. Let me ask you, I thought Clay raised a very good point there about the utter hypocrisy between the Democrat view of January 6th and the Democrat view of the BLM riots. Either you oppose rioting full stop, or you don't. And the way that the rioters for BLM throughout that period... See, there's actually a difference between like a riot and like an insurrection. That's the thing. That's a bit like most of the BLM riots were not like pre-planned and they didn't have the intent of like obstructing official government proceedings or like overturning the election. January 6th was pre-planned and it did have the intent of obstructing government proceedings. Uh, they started to specifically the certification of the vote so that they could overturn the results of the election. Compared to the January 6th riots, it was clearly demonstrably different, wasn't it? So why, my question is why? No, why were they treated it. differently? Okay, no, let me explain a couple things. So first of all, yeah, I agree that we need to be absolutely consistent. So sometimes people will lump in two different groups of people on January 6th. There's the people who went, uh, the much larger crowd that went and spoke, uh, watched Donald Trump speak on January 6th. Most of those people did not go to riot at the Capitol. Then there's the people who rioted. So whenever it reaches the people who just listen to the speech, I go, whoa, 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 no, they just showed up to listen to a speech. They didn't do anything wrong. But when you go and you smash into the Capitol looking to murder Mike Pence and Nancy Pelosi, obviously you've done something massively wrong. Now when it comes to the BLM situation, the original protests were like the original people listening to Donald Trump. They came out because they were deeply concerned about the injustice against African Americans in this country, and they were right. Then at some point, a smaller group of people committed violence. Uh, police went to go arrest those people, and they should. Of course they should. The one problem that I thought uh, persisted after that initial outburst was some parts of like Portland and Seattle were taken over, and the police let them do that for some period of time. And that was nuts. And so that's when I started saying, guys, this is not progressive. This is not the right, right. way to go. We, we're not for lawlessness. And, okay. and then, of course, Trump did it in a more spectacular fashion. Let me bring Claudia in. You've been very patiently. Um, you've got a unique kind of perspective here from your own family, where your mom obviously has been out there very vocally extolling the benefit and virtues of Trump. And then your dad obviously hates Trump with a passion. Um, you're, in, you're in the middle awesome. of this. You've grown up around Based. this. What's your kind of overview? I'm in the middle of it, literally and figuratively. Um, I don't agree with anything my mother says about Trump. I think Trump gets away with a lot. Um, I don't agree with a lot that's being said here, though. I think that there are nuances to rioting, especially like nuances of the BLM um, protests. They were not handled well, um, but we had people, you know, rush into the Capitol, and that's the Capitol. Um, we have what is it, hang on, but what's the difference um, between rioting one way and rioting another? It's still rioting. Rioting is using violence has, to get your correct. way. No, no, absolutely. I 100% agree, and I think violence is never the answer. Um, and I think when we have these nuances, like, oh. Rioting is not just using violence to get your way. That can be 
that can be an example of rioting but like you, you can also just have a riot like after like after a sports game or like during a parade like riots riots aren't necessarily like a pre-planned thing to try to to try to get your way with something like that's that's not like we can imagine a riot again like after a sports game where just like fans get rowdy and start like looting shit like oh, people can argue, oh well you know they're they were protesting black lives matter and they were protesting the election violence is never the answer i don't care really what you're talking about violence is literally never the answer back to my perspective um my father hates trump with passion your father is george um, conway who's a lawyer you mind kellyanne obviously who's a political activist and very well known so just, just for viewers who don't know so just continue yeah, um, and the way I see it is, you know, I will be voting for Kamala Harris, but I don't like a lot of things that she says, but the reason I'm voting for Kamala Harris is for the sake of the safety of our democracy and for women's rights. I mean, Trump gets away with everything. He called Kamala um, a mentally disabled person. He said she wasn't black. He says, look at what happened in Springfield, Ohio, you know, with the schools on lockdowns. Gross, and the it's ridiculous. Gross, and he's the only person who can get away with all this. Do I think that Kamala going to the border was a, po a political stunt? Absolutely. But do I? But when I weigh the two, to me, it's not comparable. You know, the rhetoric is not comparable. The, the rhetoric, the precedent of a president's rhetoric is so important, and the rhetoric we have in this country is ridiculous. Say, you, know, you say that, but Kamala Harris used phrases like Trump was the, you know, the enemy of democracy, that Biden said he had to be stopped, and then two people in the last two and a half months. That's, that's all like, true. That's all true. And they tried to stop him by assassinating him. And in the second case, uh, we know from a note that these... What he wanted to do? Do he wanted to do one in July? Do he wanted to, do, wanted to say that's not true? Like... The shooter made, or you know, planning to shoot him. That he was using exact phraseology from Kamala Harris, literally repeating it in his notes. So you say the rhetoric is only bad if it's from Trump, or much worse, but it's the rhetoric oh, from... Oh, no, no, not at all. But the Democrat rhetoric about Trump has clearly whipped at least two people with unhinged brains into trying to kill him. Well, that, in my opinion, is disgusting. Um, I completely condemn the assassination attempts on former President Donald Trump. But when I talk about rhetoric, I'm talking about both sides. I'm not just talking about, you know, Donald Trump and the things he says. I'm talking about both sides. Mm, this back and forth, this nasty that they're playing with American man. voters, I think is abhorrent. Um, I can criticize both sides, but when we look at the rhetoric of Donald Trump compared to the rhetoric of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, it's not comparable. You know, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, maybe they shouldn't say he's a threat to democracy, which he tried to overturn the 2020 election, so there is some nuance there. But we have Donald Trump saying heinous things constantly. So, okay. yes, we can criticize both sides, yeah, but it's not comparable. Yeah, Dinesh, I want to bring you in on that. Yeah, I'd like to jump in because I think that when we're trying to look at someone's character, it doesn't just, or actually not even primarily, come down to, quote, rhetoric. You have to look at someone's character by their actions, both in the public sphere and personal. Now, look at Trump. Oh, true. You know what we should look at for, you know what we should look at for Trump? They tried to he fucking rape someone. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Plays into this roaring economy that would have almost inevitably led Trump to re-election. But then you have his advisors come to him and say to him, the men in the white coats, there's a pandemic. You need to at least temporarily shut down the economy. And Trump has got to have known, and he did know, that if I shut down the economy, I'm actually shutting down my own economy. I'm jeopardizing my own chances of re-election. And yet he did it. So is that consistent with the idea that you've got this selfish guy who only cares about his own political prospects, doesn't care about the country? I would say no. That's a very good point. About the that's a very good point. Uh, the assassination I mean, you can say, hey, but that's a very good point. Anyway, back to Dinesh. Yeah, no. Well, Trump, look at the way in which Trump has responded to both assassination attempts. I mean, this level of bravery. So I are, think we, it, are we seeding that, like, a lot the dem Democrats were mostly responsible for the lockdowns? That it was Trump who was responsible for them, but now all of a sudden the lockdowns are a good thing. They were It was virtuous that Donald Trump did them, but also somehow evil when the Democrats did them. Unmatched by anyone, <laughs> to, be, to be fair, he hasn't said that, but like a lot of, that's what a lot of Republicans oh, you know, think. So. Today, who is a guy who, when he's been dragged down by the Secret Service, pulls himself up, not knowing if there are more shooters, more shots, and shouts, fight, fight, fight? Who is a guy who upon a second... I mean, like... They said the shooter was down, and then, and then Trump... <laughs> Trump was, like, down for, like, 30 seconds or whatever. And, and they kept yelling, shooter down, shooter down, shooter down. And then Trump was like, wait, let me get my shoes. <laughs> and then they brought him up slowly. And then, like, he's saying, he's acting like it was, like, immediately when he didn't know there were more shooters. They had told him, they had all said shooters down, and they had all said that they wanted to move him now. And then he said, wait, let me get my shoes. <laughs> and then once he stood up, they tried to start moving him, and he said, wait, wait, wait. And then he did his fist in the air thing. Like, <laughs> assassination attempt where there was a man he, he, he did a photo op after he knew... <laughs> there weren't any more shooters. And evidently a few holes like, down who has been trying to kill you and you are a little annoyed that you've been interrupted in your golf game because you were just about to make an amazing putt. I mean, I don't know anyone alive who would react I to totally these agree. kinds of terrifying I, situations yeah. in this way. It's clearly a window into his character. I, I completely agree. Whether you love him or hate him, you cannot dispute that Trump has shown huge personal courage when he's literally come under fire. Uh, check, I want to put really? you in this clip. This is from really? John Kerry, obviously former Democrat grandee. Uh, I think it's just like a narcissist that like wants to photo op so he can win the election. Like, the World Economic Forum panel on green energy. And at the end of the panel, a member of the audience asked what could be done to push back against disinformation surrounding climate change online. And he said this. There's a lot of discussion now about how you curb uh, those entities uh, in order to guarantee that you're going to have, you know, some accountability on facts, et cetera. But look, if people go to only one source and the source they go to is sick and, uh, you know, has an agenda and they're putting out disinformation, uh, our First Amendment stands as a major block to the ability to be able to just, you know, hammer it out of existence. I thought that was an extraordinary thing to say out loud, Jay. I mean, you got, you got a guy who was nearly president of the United States basically saying the First Amendment is a real problem. No. Uh, so first of all, look, the establishment uh, has a certain agenda and they put out a massive amount of propaganda oh, to, uh, okay. you know, back that in mainstream media. And then if anybody opposes it uh, from the so-called populist right and the actual populist left, uh, they hammer it down. But in this case, John Kerry was saying, hey, look, the guys like Dinesh D'Souza do these outrageous lies like 2,000 mules, but there's not much we could do about it because of the First Amendment. So that's, he's not saying get rid of the First Amendment. He never said that. And by the way, if he did say that, I would be 100% opposed to him. No, no, he said it was a problem. Right -wing. I mean, the right wing, they're saying arrest all the protests. I don't know. You didn
I don't know if he was saying prescriptively that we ought to we ought to ban these things, but the First Amendment blocks us from doing Justice, it. Who protests Israel? Uh, you know, it, it, Donald Trump is saying, "Hey, uh, Google and Facebook, I'm going to imprison you guys because I, mean, I don't like what you're doing." Washington Post, he threatened True. to shut them down because they criticized them. He doesn't believe the Pearl Moscow protests. And he, the the protests. Protests. And he declared yeah. out loud that we should terminate the entire Constitution. Right, so Clay. if I thought John Kerry was 10% of Donald Trump and how much he hated the Constitution, right. I would be opposed to John Kerry. But I don't think he said that at all. Clay, I thought it was a pretty sinister thing for him to say, actually. I agree with you, Piers, and uh, I got a couple of things here. One, um, to me, and I respect Claudia's opinion, I respect Sanks, even though uh, he probably doesn't respect mine or Dinesh's, because I believe in the First Amendment, and I believe it is the single most important right that we have in the United States, and I believe that if you're only going to be a single-issue voter, to me, supporting the candidate who endorses the marketplace of ideas to the largest degree is the candidate you should be I mean, Trump, again, also did do the thing where he's like, I want to suspend the citizenship of anyone who fucking burns the flag, right? And again, the thing with the uh, the protesters in college campuses that I'm pretty sure he said he wants to deport. That is clearly Donald Trump here. Kamala, uh, Kamala has said Kamala that there needs to be more censorship. No, no. Kamala Harris has said that there needs to be more censorship. censorship. She demanded... And also the, um... What was the social media? The, uh, section... Section... 230 was it section 230 social media when conservatives were all as mad about the COVID stuff and they wanted to like repeal section 230 which would allow people which would have treated social media companies like publishers and would have allowed people to sue to sue sue social media companies if they posted stuff they didn't like I forget exactly what it was you can say that but it's not constitutional no it happened well wouldn't the same thing apply to Kamala Harris then like what it's just like clearly it's evidence that he like does not really care about the constitutional <laughs> constitutional republic that we have. It's just like, yeah. So I also claims here it's one there. That's thanks to section two thirty. States that no provider or use an interacting computer service that will treat it as a publisher or speaker, information provided by another informers and content, illegal phrasing, shields companies that host trailing messages from being sued to oblivion by anyone who feels wrong by someone else that posted something, whether the complaint's legitimate or not. Politicians both sides argue for different reasons that Twitter, Facebook, and social media platforms that abuse our protections should lose their immunity, or at least have to earn it by satisfying requirements set by the government. Yeah. That Donald Trump not be allowed to have a Twitter account, even Elizabeth Warren wasn't willing to go that far. She is radical when it comes to restricting speech. Let me also build on something Dinesh said, because I think it's important, because I think it goes to the heart of the argument that somehow Trump is going to be a dictator. In any of our lives, there has never been a point in time when the American public as a whole has more relinquished its freedoms than in the early days of COVID. In March and April and May of 2020, the amount... I mean, like, that's kind of, di like, a social contract 101? Like, you know, how much freedom are you willing to go for safety? You know, during COVID, the government probably has to, uh, you probably have to give up some of your freedom in, in exchange for safety. Like, yes. A power that was undertaken by the federal government and was voluntarily relinquished by the American public to a large extent was scary. I want to hammer this because I think it's so important. There has never been a point in time. Yeah, the social contract, like. It, it was COVID. That kind of makes sense. Any of our lives, maybe other than right after 9-11, when a president could have adopted more dictatorial powers and taken a greater expansive role of control over the entire country. What did Donald Trump do then? He deferred to every governor and every mayor and let them determine based... I mean, like, Biden was also president during part of COVID. But, the results okay. in their communities and their did states... Biden greatly expand that power? I don't what know. the rules should be for COVID. In my opinion, Trump actually deferred far too much to lunatics like Gavin Newsom and Cuomo who were locking down their states like crazy, but he allowed the Ron DeSantis's and the Brian Kemp's of the world in Florida and Georgia to make different decisions. That's the goal of federalism is to have 50 state laboratories at a time. Compare it to what Joe Biden did when he came into office. He said, if you don't get the COVID shot, I'm going to fire you. He said that schools needed to... That mandate, I'm pretty sure, was struck down by... Um... Wow, thank you, Josh. Just got this uh, nice picture mentioned to me from my friend. Awesome, man. Um, that mandate was struck down, right? That was the OSHA mandate. Say, Biden actually took far more dictatorial powers during COVID than Trump did, and the left cheered him on. Again, if Trump wanted to be a dictator, there's never been a time in any of our lives for multi-months where a dictator could have taken over more, and he deferred. He let every governor and mayor make their own decision. That, to me, is the ultimate test on how much power Trump will have. He could have taken more than anybody ever has, and he relinquished it. Okay, um, just to pivot quickly, we're running out of time, but Clay, you start with this, which is the VP debate on Tuesday. Uh, obviously, Waltz against Vance. Are you concerned that, that J.D. Vance, it, it might be a rough night for him? For J.D., no, I think Tim Walls, I mean, in all honesty, Pierce, is the dumbest person who has ever been on American presidential ticket in my life. Uh, I think the challenge that J.D. <laughs> Vance is going to have, J.D., whatever you think about him, is a super, no, Trump is a super bright guy. You can't succeed in business uh, like he has without a lot of talent. Well, he didn't, Tim Walls is a moron. He's a miserable He's absolutely moron. He's going to get Trump. embarrassed, I think. And the thing that J.D. Vance is going to have to be careful of, the thing that J.D. Vance is going to have to be careful of is that he doesn't pummel Tim Walls so much that people start feeling bad for him. Walls hasn't done a single solo interview with a national media figure since he was elevated. This is a guy whose wife bragged about leaving the door windows open. Uh, so they I mean, like, J.D. Vance is been shown to be pretty uncharismatic i don't know I don't, I don't know if i any any like blatantly like repeated false claims about the haitian immigrant thing as well I, you know i don't know you know i don't know if i'm 
that worried about him pummeling Walt so hard that people don't. <laughs> That people people feel bad for him. He could smell the burning rubber of Minneapolis. This guy who lied about his uh, military service, who uh, is is utterly unqualified to be a heartbeat away from the presidency of everybody on tickets. I don't think Kamala's qualified. I think Tim Walls' her worst decision. She should have taken Josh Shapiro. I think he's going to get embarrassed on Tuesday night. I uh, check the dumbest the dumbest we've ever seen. All right, Tim Walls. Yeah. So look, guys, you I, you guys live in an amazing imaginary world. They're like, if you if Trump wanted to be dictator, he would probably if he lost an election have somebody or a lot of people rush the Capitol and then not stop them, even though they're trying to murder his <laughs> vice president. And he would try to terminate the president. He did do that. He did all of that. And you guys don't acknowledge the First Amendment. Kamala Harris has never said anything against the First Amendment. Donald Trump threatens to imprison anyone who criticizes him. You guys live in a delusional, imaginary world. So in, in your world, has, Donald Trump, Trump, Donald, Trump Trump has Donald Trump ever prosecuted as a Democrat? Shouldn't you be able to point to at least one? No, by the way, you know who's prosecuting Democrats? Joe Biden. I, I got no love for Joe Biden, but he went after Senator Menendez. Uh, his, his for real. And the fucking Mayor Adams of New York hey, just got indicted. Hold on. Clay, let me answer the question. Clay, let me answer the question. You know why the federal government, the FBI, Justice Department goes after someone? When they have evidence. Okay, so Trump says, I want uh, uh, Jeff Bezos arrested because I want you to post something about me. And then he goes, hold on, let me answer the question. Then he goes to the Department of Justice. And they go, yeah, but what evidence do you have? He goes, he was mean to me. And they're like, no, we're not going to prosecute him because he was mean to you. Grow up, you little child. So which leads us back to the debate. So we're talking about Tim Walls being unintelligent. Are you crazy? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, well, he's still on. It was who came up with the locker up chant. You guys again pretend it didn't happen when all of you were chanting. I want to read um <laughs> a great fucking face there to Vazan. I want to read uh, Michael Cohen's book. Didn't Michael Cohen just come out with his new book? Um, I, I probably want to read some of this book as well. Disloyal, the story, true story of former president. Yeah. Lock her up! Lock her up! She's up! You guys loved it! You loved it! Hold on, Jake, let's get real. Here's the thing. Donald Trump is a criminal. What do you want us to do? You pretend to be in favor of freedom, and you pretend to be in favor of equality in the Constitution. Donald Trump is a lifelong criminal. He's broken every law that we can imagine. And you go, oh, let him go! Let him go! He's our leader! He's our beloved leader! He should be above the law! You were like a guy who got broken up with and can't get over it. This is so deranged. Like, I don't want to try to until he decided to run as a Republican after 75 years of being a public figure. All right, let me bring it, let me bring it. Trump, I've always known he was a pea brain little idiot. Donald Trump is the dumbest man we've ever seen. <laughs> he's just pretending he's smart. He's like, well, how could he be a successful? He's not a successful businessman. Six major bankruptcies. The moron built three casinos. He's a successful television show. He's built tons of buildings. He's the only one. Yeah, he had a television show. Yeah, like he always they does. They never made a living. They never made a living. They never made a living. Hey, do, do, you think he, do you think he has to be a smart person to have a successful television show? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the evidence shows that like reality TV stars usually aren't particularly smart you know like you know kim kardashian had like a very all the kardashians had their very successful television show i don't know if it's still going on it might be i wouldn't really say that's evidence of them being particularly particularly you know smart you know like logan and jake paul are like huge internet vloggers but i wouldn't say that's evidence of them being particularly smart it's I can tell you he's a very successful show. Show. I can tell you his television show is very successful and he showed extremely high levels of intelligence yeah. on that show. Shane, he may he be the winner of the years. Let me bring in Dinesh. That's not a business. Let me bring in Dinesh. He's a carnival barker. Actually, he he tons, actually no. Hang on, the apprentice which he had a stake in made tons of money, so that's not true. Uh, Dinesh. He didn't run the business. He, 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 he didn't run the business. No, he, did have, he did have a stake in the business of the brand of apprentice. Yeah, yeah, you know, now you're playing word games. You said he had a stake in the business because he had equity in it as part of his deal as an actor. They hired him to be an actor acting as a businessman when they knew and they say now, yeah, we knew he was a failed loser businessman. He's the most loser. It's incredible this P-Braid loser managed to become president against the most qualified candidate in American history, Hillary Clinton. There you go, Jake. Let me bring in Dinesh. Because the American people hate the establishment, that's why. Right, Dinesh, on the, on the, on the debate, does it matter what happens on Tuesday night? Does it have any real consequence? I, I think it does, uh, in part because, well, certainly in the Trump case, Trump is well into his 70s. I do think that people are thinking a little bit beyond Trump. Uh, I think that JD, the question is whether J.D. Vance will sort of inherit the Trumpian mantle, so to speak. I think the debate's going to be a contrast in styles. And that is to say that Tim Walz is clearly a kind of over-the-top uh, populist from the left. He's He gesticulates wildly. Uh, he's the kind of guy who tries to make you know expressions of being an ordinary guy who fixes his own car. And uh, Now, J.D. Vance is a little more cerebral. Uh, and this is, in a way, a contest for whose rhetoric is actually going to speak more uh, to the white working class. And that appears to be a key swing constituency yeah. in the election. So uh, it's, it's two populists, yeah. one from the right and one from the left, yeah. with two different styles appealing to the same group of people. I totally agree with that. Um, Claudia, final to you, the VP debate, do you think people of your generation, do they pay much attention to the VP debates, do you think? Absolutely, and so much more than other years and other elections. You know, historically, we haven't seen that a vice presidential pick has much impact on the election, but this year, I mean, it's different. Everybody's eyes are on Tim Walls and what he's saying and what he's doing with his cars, and everybody's eyes are on J.D. Vance and what he's saying about this person and that person one day. And tomorrow, you know, I do agree. I think that Josh Shapiro would have been a much better pick, and I think he would have killed J.D. Vance in a debate, but that's not the situation <coughs> we're in right now. So I'm a little concerned um, for both of them, quite frankly, but um, excited to see what's going to happen. You know, happen. all I would say is that before the presidential debate recently, uh, I was utterly convinced that Donald Trump would flatline Kamala Harris in that debate, and I was completely wrong. So uh, it's been a very surprising race. <laughs> and I've given up making predictions. I'm going to watch it with great interest. Uh, thank you to my panel. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. It'll be interesting to, to watch it. We'll watch it, uh, well, today, technically, I guess, at 9 p.m. today is when the presidential debate is. I'll stream a little bit before then because I think we got to find react to that shit as well. If you want to chat with me live, sub here or go to nonfon420 on Twitch or kick via the links below. Once again, please like and sub to help with the algorithm and consider sending a donation through YouTube Super Thanks to directly support me and I'll make sure to reply to any question you ask. See you guys next time.